Welcome to Keep What You Earn, your judgment and jargon-free zone for entrepreneurs of all levels. Get ready to learn how to scale your business, save money in taxes, and create a business that grows your wealth. If it feels like the financial side of business is like eating your vegetables, well then think of this podcast as the ranch dressing to make the process a little more enjoyable. My name is Shannon Weinstein. I'm a CPA and business owner on a mission to simplify money and empower others through knowledge. I hope this episode inspires you to take action, but remember that the information we share is for educational purposes only and is not individual tax advice. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start the show. So I want to talk about something that tends to get misconstrued, tends to get implemented incorrectly, in my opinion, and that's goal setting and key performance indicators or KPIs. When it comes to KPIs, I think a lot of people tend to keep their goals too high level and keep their metrics too high level to be able to actually attain them. So I'm going to share with you a bit of our framework for goal setting and how to define metrics that I think will serve you. Because if you're trying to make your first million in revenue per year, if you're trying to reach certain revenue goals, it's going to be really important to master certain metrics in your business, not just on the financial statements, but understanding the drivers that really impact these outcomes that you want. So I'm going to run through a sort of a scenario or example on how we set our goals using us as kind of a case study. So First of all, we met as a team and we were talking about what would we like to accomplish in the next year? And there were a lot of things that came up. There were a lot of different objectives, like growing the podcast, you know, growing revenue, growing profit, obviously, growing the team. So we were really kind of in this growth stage of expansion of everything and trying to figure out what was working. So we were trying to figure out, okay, if we mean grow the podcast, what does that mean? And what does it mean? in terms of results that we can expect from that. You know, if we say grow our client base, what is that? Well, that's two new clients per quarter and understanding that this is the pace at which we can grow. So when I say goals, I don't just mean like two new clients per quarter. I mean that we're finding aligned clients, that we are finding, you know, high lifetime value clients, that we are finding quality clients. So here is what we want to consider when we're setting goals. You want to really think about the conceptual goal of, I want to grow my firm. Okay, grow my business. What does that mean? So I want you to then brainstorm. What does growing my business look like? What does scaling my business look like? Let's get out of these abstract terms and into specifics on what that actually looks and feels like. And what I recommend doing is dividing your business into different dimensions. So in the very least... I'm going to give you a few examples of how you can divide it and I'll tell you how we did ours. And we're actually revisiting ours anyway, but one of them is sales. So one of them is looking at sales and close at closes and revenue and, you know, number of new clients onboarded, et cetera. One is marketing and lead generation. This is different than sales. So marketing and lead gen is looking at the leading indicators that are going to tell you what sales you'll make. And I'll explain that in a second. Then you have product, and that means your product or service, your customer fulfillment. For us, that means the client services team. So looking at our product. And then, you've, then you also have the people, the team. So it's promo. If I had to be the four Ps, it's promotion, marketing, and legion, product, the fulfillment, people, the team, and purchase, the sale. So I just made that up on the spot. Four Ps. There you go. Promo, purchase, product, and people. I might start using that actually. So if we use that as kind of a framework, I think everything kind of fits into those umbrellas there in, fr- in terms of what we've actually set for goals. So when you look at these different areas, I want you to split up again, marketing, sales, team, slash operations, and product. Almost anything can fit in one of those categories. Now you look at individually in these different dimensions, what do I hope to accomplish or what does good look like? And what I want you to do is not just think about what good looks like today, but where do you want to get to and what is attainable in that time time frame? So for example, in sales, I have a goal to grow our CFO business by 20%. But what I mean by that is the revenue. And what I also mean by that is the I want to grow the average fee 
higher. So that means bringing in X number of new CFO clients at our new rate so that we can elevate the average rate of clients. And then what we're also going to do is supplement our team with a salesperson or an appointment setter eventually. So this is going to be part of my goal structure. Now, when it comes to sales, there are a couple of things that are, are tricky. There's two different types of indicators when you're setting KPIs. So my, let me go back to my mission or my objective is to grow my sales. Yes. My goals are going to be, you know, hire a, a person to fulfill, to do the sales process, grow by X percent in revenue, grow by X number of clients per quarter. Like the goals are kind of the measurable, did we, or did we not do this? Okay. But then we're getting to get into the KPIs. The KPIs are actually going to be the most important things to track. And that is what are the metrics that drive the, that outcome? So if I want to bring in three new clients or two new clients per quarter, what has to happen? And how do we measure that's on track to happen? So I want to break down for you the KPIs and the two different times, kinds of KPIs. One is a leading indicator and one is a lagging indicator. In the dimension of sales, a lagging indicator is your sales number. A lagging indicator is your close rate. A lagging indicator is, you know, the typically what you would think of as the metric. And this is where people get stuck. Now, there's nothing wrong with tracking this. You should absolutely track your close rates. However, what you should also be doing is tracking leading indicators. And leading indicators are the things that determine if you're going to accomplish the ahead of time. So I'll give you an example. So if your goal is, let's say, to increase sales by $10,000 a month, okay, so we want to, or sell $10,000 a month, whatever that may look like for you. So let's just say it's 10K a month in terms of new sales. So, okay, that's fine. So my lagging indicator is sales per month. My lagging indicator might be close rate, might be. A leading indicator would be how many new people were added to our email list this month and got the email. How many people clicked through the email that sold the product? How many people did we do sales calls with? You know, and start using those as the leading indicators to predict if you're going to meet your goal before you get the lagging indicator. So these are the things that you can measure before the outcome happens to know if you're on track or not to hit the outcome. So for example, if you know your close rate is 70%, then you know that you have to hit a certain number of sales calls. If you're going to close 70% of them, you now have a new target of a certain number of calls to hold and a certain number of leads to book calls with, knowing that there's going to be some attrition and no shows on the calls. So now you back into, did we hit our goal for outreach? Did we hit our goal for you know, appointment bookings for the month? And if we hit our goal for appointment bookings of the month and our closer is consistent, then there's no reasonable excuse we shouldn't hit our goal because the machine is working a certain way. Now, if you have a, a close rate issue, like let's say you're bringing in everything that you need to in order to close and your closer is closing like 10% of the leads, well, now we know we have a constraint there. We know that we can actually treat that issue. And then your new goal is going to be you don't move the goal down to meet pe where people are at. You want to have the goal be super clear and make it clear to your team that this is what's expected of them. And you can actually measure performance based off of these. You can assign ownership based on these. So if you say, hey, sales manager or hey, salesperson, this is your goal, your metric. I'm going to be measuring you based off of this. If you consistently hit this month over month, you can unlock a new bonus, right? You don't have to do that. Let's say you're on commission. But let's say if they're closing at an XYZ rate, they unlock a higher commission pool or higher commission tier. Now, you can complicate things a little bit, but I think that as long as it's clearly understood how people are compensated, clearly understood how people are connecting the impact of these different metrics to their, you know, to their results, to their performance, then that's actually really healthy. You have to be careful of incentives or unintended behavioral incentives you create. But going back to the KPIs, you do want to have some type of ownership because you want people to be monitoring these things proactively, especially the leading indicators. So let's go to another example. Like if we're talking about our team, right, and we're talking about hiring and you say, I want to add three new headcount in the next six months. Okay, cool. So again, let's backtrack into, I want to add three new people. So what has to happen? Well, I need to be interviewing at least 15 people for each of those roles. 
So that's 45 people. So if I want to do this over the next three months, <laughs> that's a lot of interviews. That's a lot of process I have to go through, especially if I'm going to be concentrating a lot into certain weeks. A leading indicator that you're going to hit your goal might be how many applicants apply for your for your position. Because if you typically, let's say you bring in 100 applicants, you interview 15 of them, and then you hire one of them. And let's just say you come down to like maybe three of them in like the final round. Well, if you actually filter this down, if you need to hire three people, then you need to do triple of all those things. So you need to have 300 applicants in order to get three people out, just as an example. So if that's the case, then if you're only bringing in, let's say, 10 applicants per job, then the likelihood, I mean, you may find somebody in that pool, but the likelihood is that you're not going to really want to interview all 10 people. And the likelihood is that you're going to be either feeling like you're set to a default or you won't be able to fill the position quickly. So in understanding some of these examples, you have to be clear on what metrics are the leading indicators that you're on track to actually meet your goals and what are the lagging indicators that tell you whether or not you've met them. And as you go through your goal setting process, I recommend, again, splitting this into dimensions, sales, marketing, product, people, and figuring out what specifically you want to see happen in your business and figuring out what are the drivers that lead to that. And here's one extra bonus tip. If you have a team and you can actually assign ownership to these different areas, have each of them present their metrics on a team call every month, even every couple of weeks or even every week in a briefing you know, pull that up as a backdrop and we can, let's agree at least every month on what they're going to focus on and what results they're going to drive and how everything they do every day is going to connect to one of these goals. That is the most important thing. You always have to make sure that you're anchoring to these goals and that everyone's activities can be somehow connected to furthering your mission in one of these areas. If it can't, then I would seriously question whether or not you want to eliminate that item and that will help keep people focused and on track. I promise you. But when it comes to goal setting, it's just so important to understand exactly how you can impact the outcome and just make sure that you're assigning ownership and you're super clear about what it is you actually want and how you're going to measure it. Okay, real talk. Our business can really mess with our emotions and our mindset. Am I right? One day we feel like we're unstoppable, like we could run through a wall, and then the next we want to burn it all down and start from scratch. Hey, I'm with you. A lot of this has to do with how we approach our money. And if you need a quick jolt of mindset habits for the next five days to help you reboot and recalibrate, check out my five-day financial mindset refresh delivered straight to your email. Click the link in the show notes to sign up right now. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your podcast platform. This small action goes a long way for podcasters to get our message heard by more business owners just like you. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to information about our guests and ways to get in touch with me. We'll see you on the next episode.